What's up guys, I'm Random Frank P, and today we're finally going to be checking out my 2019 minimal desk setup. You can see it behind me, you've seen it teased in videos, I've talked about it in others, but we're finally going to be going over it today in this video. I'll have all the gear and hardware you see from my desk setup listed for you in the description down below in case you want to check it out. But this is something that I've been working on for a while, and I wanted something completely opposite of my gaming and desk setup that you usually see behind me when I'm filming. That is, you know, triple monitors, ultra wide, very different. This is the opposite. Simple, minimal, one monitor. So, figured it'd be a nice change up and a nice, you know, secondary workspace for the channel. And that's mainly what I've been using this for. I'd say for the past two months now, about 90% of my videos have been edited over here. So first up, we'll talk about that monitor. It is a 32 inch 4K display from BenQ. It's the PD3220U. This is from their Design View designer lineup. That's what really drew me to it was the fact that this is, you know, used a lot for color accuracy representation. Uh, it's got HDR10 support. It covers 95% of DCI P3 as well as you have 100% sRGB, Adobe RGB, Rec 709 color spaces. So like I said, photo editing, video editing because of the accurate color representation. It's also got low blue light technology. And coming from an ultra wide, it was nice to kind of, you know, take a step back and go back to that 16 by nine ratio at 4K. It's definitely sharp and it just looks beautiful. One of the things that's really cool about it is for when you are photo editing or video editing, you can actually go in and uh, enable two different color profiles on the screen at once. So it's like split views. This is great again, so you can see the differences in the color profiles, uh, really a helpful feature that I haven't seen anywhere else. And you'll notice I also have this control puck plugged in. This comes with it and it really allows for quick and easy adjustments and navigating the menus right there at your fingertips without having to reach behind the monitor and navigate it through there. You can use that dial for adjusting the brightness. You have the three different profiles saved on those three buttons. It's just like I said, it makes for quick and easy adjustments. I have that on the Artifox desk riser. I actually just got this in. That's what's kind of been holding me up and it spans 48 inches across my 60 inch desk. I believe it's like five or six inches of height elevation it adds, which is also great then for storing things underneath. Also has a little drawer. I just have like a laptop and stuff in there now. So it's really nice that you have that extra real estate now on your desk due to the riser. I love the all walnut and black look to it. It definitely fits in with the rest of my kind of walnut and black color theme you have going on here. For a look into the peripherals, no gaming gear here. Again, very different from my gaming setup. This is my custom grid 600 keyboard that I just built on the channel. So if you missed it, definitely check out that video. I'm using that keyboard in combination with Logitech MX Ergo Plus. This is essentially a trackball mouse and very different to learn at first. Uh, but again, for color correcting, it's nice to quickly just spin the ball to, you know, get in those dials nice and accurate. It took a bit to get used to this at first because obviously it's very different from moving your wrist. It's just stay stationary now, uh, but definitely ergonomic and the transition hasn't been that tough at all. Both of those are sitting on the camping desk pad that I got from Novel Keys. I have had so many questions about this mouse pad. It looks really nice. It's all white. It's a subtle nod of like mountains in the background with some trees and a little tent. For the rest of the peripherals, we can get into audio. And first, my headphones of choice are literally my dream headphones, the Sennheiser HD 800S. These have always been their top of the line audiophile product that I fell in love with when I first saw it a long time ago, which is the original HD 800s because it looks so unique. Um, and I tried them out, fell in love with them again. And then recently, a few months ago, you might've seen them before, but I got the HD 800S model, which is the upgraded version. And oh my God. It sounds incredible, uh, very just lively. They're open back and it is such a difference from any other headphone I've tried in the past. They're sitting on a leather and walnut handmade headphone stand. I think it looks really nice. And again, it just fits in perfectly with the theme. This is one of their newer products actually. And you've probably seen this when I did my uh, massive unboxing haul last month, but their newest release that I have seen on their website. So definitely wanted to pick it up because it just fits. 
Now what's powering the Sennheiser headphones is the JDS Labs stack, it's known as, with their L amp and L DAC. So it's two separate pieces. You have both a DAC and an amplifier. It powers the headphones with no issues at all and just sounds killer as a combo here. One of the things I really like is for the DAC, that little uh, button there is touch sensitive, so you, you turn it on and off at the touch, cycle through the different inputs and stuff. And for the amplifier, we have a really nice and smooth volume dial up front. And I just love having big volume dials on a product like this because you can just quickly, smoothly adjust the volume at, the, at an arm's reach has a nice light ring around it as well. So it looks good, it sounds good, and it's just a killer combo here for this. In addition to all that, my speaker setup behind me are from Vanitu. These are the Transparent One Encores. Shout out to Josh Floor for the recommendation. And I was pricing speakers for around six months, all different kinds. Came across these from his channel. Didn't know much about them, but he gave them a glowing review. I checked them out, picked them up, and have been absolutely blown away. These sound incredible. So you can see I have them propped up on some sands on each side of my desk. I have them kind of angled in that triangle positioning, so they're facing me. And these just blew me away. That's like the best way I can describe them. For whether it's listening to music, watching some movies or videos, some light gaming, or you know, referencing audio and stuff, um, I just did not expect the amount of clarity and bass that comes out of these. They, they're not, you know, they're not huge speakers like you might see. There is no dedicated separate uh, subwoofer that I have. But built in, it does have this Vanitu clear bass technology, which is going to allow the speakers to reproduce uh, bass at lower frequencies than other speakers do at this size. And just, it's crazy. <laughs> Now what's also really cool is that it has built-in Bluetooth, which you know when I'm filming or something like that in the studio and I'm not sitting at my desktop, I could hook up my phone to this and wirelessly play Spotify or any sort of music like that. And it does fill the entire studio. These things bump. So a definite pleasant surprise. Uh, these are just killer. Moving right along, since this desk setup is for video editing, one of the newest additions has been this external hard drive that you see. This is the Lacy 2 Big 16 terabyte RAID 0 hard drive. I got this in May right after they pretty much released it and announced it. And this is where I back up all my files to for when I'm, you know, video editing and stuff. I can load off all the files for that video onto here and then still have them backed up in case I want to reference those files for different videos and stuff. With 16 terabytes, I'm going to be good for a while. So inside are two 8 terabyte Iron Wolf Pro Enterprise class hard drives. And as you can see, they're hot swappable. You just lift that kind of front lever there, it slides out, you can swap them, replace them, do whatever you want. Very, very simple. And with transfer speeds up to 440 megabytes a second, it just makes, you know, transferring um, all my files from my CFast card onto the hard drive now a breeze. It also has their toolkit software for setting this up when you get it and uh, managing your files, whether you want this to be in RAID 0 or RAID 1 for, you know, backing up the actual hard drive itself with redundancy. It's surprisingly quiet for using, you know, traditional hard drives. And I think it looks great in this new all black colorway. You've probably seen it in like silver and stuff in the past, but when I saw it in black, I knew I had to get that. It fits in nicely uh, right under the monitorizer and boom, 16 terabytes right there. Then that'll lead us into my PC. Uh, I did this build in May, I want to say. The Motif Monument. It's this really unique open air chassis uh, that just looks very, very unique. Uh, as for the specs, I have an i7-8700 CPU, got a Be Quiet Dark Rock TF cooler, some of that Halos digital fan frames that you see in the back for kind of throwing some extra light. Uh, the RAM is 16 gigs of Corsair Vengeance RGB Pro RAM on an Asus Strix B360i Wi-Fi motherboard and the EVGA GTX 1660 Ti XC. So again, not really a gaming rig. Um, yes, it could do some moderate and medium to high gaming, uh, but that's not what this is for. I talked about it already. So if you do recall this build when I first uh, built it, it was mainly a black and blue PC, but with these cables from uh, Mainframe, their custom cables look stellar. So I had the black and blue ones before, and now we have the same ones again, but in the like kind of carbon and red colorway. So I can change that up, match it to the fan frame and the, uh, the RGB RAM, and it adds that nice extra glow on the desktop. And then lastly, for the chair, bringing this all together, we have the Vertigear Gaming Series Trigger lineup. 
This is the Trigger 350 Special Edition. Uh, it's, I wanna say like Corvette Red. I could be wrong on the coloring of that, but it has this really nice kind of sparkle to it. The red is nice and deep. Again, matches with the sort of secondary color theme I have going on. And even though it has gaming in the title, it's not really, you know, a gaming chair. Uh, definitely more of an ergonomic office chair, I'd say. Adjusting everything is super simple from lumbar support to the height, the armrests, uh, the actual like seat you can adjust. Everything here is essentially adjustable to make it most comfortable for you. And again, when I'm kicking back in a editing session for six to eight hours sometimes, I'm just knocking out videos, you need a comfortable ergonomic chair. I've always had lower lumbar problems and with this, since that's all adjustable, makes it so much more relaxing and comfortable when I am sitting there for hours and hours on a time. Yes, it's definitely a pricier chair, but as one of the most important things when it comes to your setup or you're spending most of your time sitting in, this is where justifying a higher price point comes in. It's not that bad once you think about it. I also like the look of their Trigger 350 series a lot more than just a traditional, you know, gaming chair that you might see. It does come in different colors. This is just their special edition and stuff. Some other things around the setup to wrap this all up. I got this mouse pad. It's like a MX Cherry patent. Thought it looked really cool. So I had that framed above there. You know me and the keyboards. In addition to the monitor riser, I also picked up this shelf from Artifox. Very nice and clean and simple looking. It's also magnetic, uh, so you can like put things up there. Just I think it kind of fits in with the minimalist approach I'm going with. You probably saw me hang this up in a vlog a few months ago. And to the right of the setup, I have a massive shelf uh, for a lot of my, you know, Philadelphia Eagles gear, some little trinkets, older keyboards, camera gear, lenses, all that kind of stuff, just to make a nice and refreshing, different spot in the studio. I said when I first bought the house that when I was you know, designing the studio, I wanted to eventually have different sets. And that's essentially what this is gonna be. You probably noticed that I started filming a lot more over here for B-roll and stuff. And uh, I think just as a secondary workspace, having a completely different minimal setup is a really nice uh, fresh breath of air for my gaming setup over there with three ultra wides. So yeah, hope you guys enjoyed my 2019 minimal desk setup tour. Like I said before, everything you see, I will drop in the description down below so you can check it out. If you like this video, give it a big thumbs up to show your support. You can follow me on Twitter, at RandomFrankP. And lastly, if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button. I hope you enjoyed, have a good day.